How to transform your traditional art to digital art. I'll get straight to the point. This is a picture in my sketchbook that I took a picture of from my phone. I'm going to color it without having to bother doing line art from scratch. Here's how to do it. First step, I adjust the photo to the canvas. If it feels right, I adjust the brightness and contrast of the image until the black and white colors are clearly visible. Next, I do tonal correction, binarization, and make the line art clearer. Now the line art is done. However, you still can't color in the layer below. Therefore, select the checkered color located in this color option and go to Edit. Then convert brightness to opacity. You finish doing your line art. Next, I will do base color on my drawing. I set line art layer to reference layer and use this close and fill tool. You can find it in Clip Studio Asset with the name Close and Fill. This tool really helps me, especially when making webtoons. You can color objects just by circling the area. Next, I will finish my coloring stage. I wanted to finish this video quickly, but I also wanted to show you my speed paint video without the speeding up that will make you dizzy later. That's why I tried to color it more simply without having to flip the canvas often. When coloring skin, I usually start shading by giving a little airbrush first. I give airbrush shading in the area around the face. Only after that, I start shading it using a flat brush from the default G pen, whose tip I edit to be flat. I think I already gave a tutorial on how to make your own custom brushes. Should I make another one? If the shading is done, I do blending with the built-in blend tool in Clip Studio. I blend the areas that I think need to be tidied up. Then, if the blending stage is done, I like to give a red color to the chin and eye area. The next step is I color the eye part. I color the white area first, then give a little shading. For the eyeballs, I use a custom eye brush that I once made. I'm lazy to do something repetitive, like drawing eyeballs in a row. So I made it into its own brush. Ha 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 ha. Next, coloring the clothes. For clothes and hair, I always color them in one layer with the layer setting locked transparent. I do this because it is easier to blend later. Blending colors done in one layer looks more natural to me, and this has become my habit every time I draw. I give shading airbrush with color similar to the surrounding first, like orange color on the area close to the skin. Then I do shading as usual. Just so you know, I only keep the color palette for the base color, and for shading, I always improvise. That's why maybe every picture I make the shading color of the character looks inconsistent. If anyone asks how to determine shading easily, I just answer, just determine the direction of the light. Then the shading area is in the opposite area. Then, trust your gut. After all, this is not a realistic picture. Use your imagination or use a reference if you want. Next, if the shading stage is complete, I will combine it into one layer and change the line art color to a close color. After that, I added additional details like strands of hair, smoothing out his jaw, etc. If so, I also combine the color layer and the line art layer to make it easier to give effects later. Before giving the effect, I tidied up the coloring on his hair again.
If everything is done, it's time to add effects. I like the atmosphere in the afternoon, therefore I give shading with reddish orange color with layer multipiece setting. I will add the light by creating a new layer, setting add glow and orange color. I added the light area in the left area. Then you can add blur, adjust the opacity and others that you feel are according to your wishes. I added a blur effect to make it look like a camera and added a flare on the left side. Then it's done. I really did this picture quickly where I could finish the coloring in just 40 minutes. I didn't make it as detailed as my usual pictures. I hope you don't get dizzy when watching my speed paint video because actually I quite often flip the canvas and try to hold it this time. That's all for me. Thank you for watching. See you on next video.